All right, so in this part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up image planes so that you can model from reference images. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump over into Photoshop. And you see I found uh, there's a lot of different sites to get car blueprints. Uh, so I just was scouring until I found one that I wanted to do and that I thought would be good for the sample that we're trying to produce. So I came across this. This is a Dodge Charger. We're going to model this and texture it. And so, so since it has four views, we really have all the reference we could ever want so that we can make sure that we get this uh, likeness of this car as close as possible with the poly budget that we're going to give ourselves. So what you need to do before you get started is make a, a new Photoshop file uh, like this. And if you go into canvas size, you can see that you want it square. It doesn't have to be 900 pixels, but you just want to be able to fit uh, without losing any of the resolution of the source images. So since these images were over 800 pixels, I just went to 900 and made it square. And I put each one on its own layer and save them out as individual JPEGs into the Maya Projects source images folder. So once you're done with that, you want to go into the file uh, the four view and back in the Maya scene that you're going to start in. And you just want to go ahead and drop image planes uh, on top of every camera and the orthographic views. So if you go into view, image plane, import image, we know that's the top. And for the side view, I want it facing down the negative, negative x. Or that's actually the positive z. Um, front is good, and the top also needs to be rotated. Oops. And that would be in the Y. So is it 90? Uh, minus 90. Okay, so now we can go back into our viewport view. And you just want to start lining these guys up. And I prefer to do it with them all out of the way of each other. lock these all to a layer and put them in the reference view so that I don't accidentally kink or scale or move move these anymore now that I'm happy with it. Um, so if I turn off my grid and I go into my side view, I mean my four view, we now can start creating our box, our first box. And what I have selected is interactive mode so that when I, instead of just creating a box at the one-to-one, -one, I can draw the box out and sort of immediately just go to work, go to town. Um, I got my edge loop tool, and I've got it set to make double double span cuts, uh, which I want 
for the beginning purposes of the of the box modeling that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to rough out the side first. So I hit G for that last tool and Q to get back into selection mode and I just start roughing out curvature. Um, now might want to just switch off the multiple edge loops and go for single loops at this point because you don't want to get too caught up in uh, in making edge loops when you don't really have the core shapes down but it's definitely not a bad idea to get in there and start attacking the shape right away. So, and you can also flip on the shading x-ray so that you can see through and see where you want to have your terminating edges so they correlate with where new shapes are going to be added. So the recessed wheels shapes will need to be thought out early as well as like the windshield, doors. Although we won't be modeling recessed door uh, windows and doors on this car because of our poly constraints. But we will, uh, we will try to use every bit of our budget to get a decent looking uh, and smooth looking topology. So I'll add another one here and I'm going to scale it so that it's straight line. And I'll bring it down to the end of that grill piece. And so you can see that we're just staying in right now the side view. So it's going to look completely square. And what we want to do is I'm modeling on the, on the uh, uh, positive X side only. And what I want to do is remove these interfaces. I have symmetry turned on, so I'm going to turn that off so that when I select a face on the inside, it doesn't select the outer faces. So now it's off. And go in and another thing if you wanted to do is you could use this paint selection tool. Uh, There. If you, if you want to quickly select a bunch of faces without selecting anything on the other side, that's a tool that you can use if you want. It's there for you. So I've got those faces selected. I'm just going to click the delete key. And now pop into the front view and deal with some of the proportions here. You can see that I do have an edge loop here. So start to bring that hood shape in. And you can see also that I have all my vertices are not actually lined up on the 
grid. So I'm going to select that inner ring of verts and hold down X. And with the move tool, you see the little snap to the grid lines. And if I scale them, I'm make sure that they're all uniformly there along that grid line. So I'm going to take my multi-cut tool and connect this guy to here. That'll sort of form some basic, uh, so what I want to, I didn't like what I did there, so I'm going to scale this back out. sort of forming, starting to form the rounded body contours there. Sorry, kind of losing, getting caught up in this uh, modeling fun stuff. But, uh, you know, you might want to, at this point, make yourself a instance on the other side. Now, what what you want to do before you actually go ahead and uh, can bring up the the duplicate special options box, but before you do that, hold down B in the move tool, hold down D, and then while selecting the X manipulator, X axis manipulator, press X, and that will snap your manipulator to the grid. I'll turn the grid back on so you can see it. And so you can see that it is now at the origin in line with those vertices, that inner row of edges. So if I go ahead and click on the instance, minus one scale X, you'll see that we now, hey, we have a car. We're done. Just kidding. Uh, no, but we, we can now work on both sides, and it will only update the mesh that we want, which is handy because, you know, there's no good tools for modeling symmetrically that I know of. Uh, so what I do is I model in one half and just constantly make sure that that I'm updating on the other side in the uh, in the instance side, and then eventually we'll 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 merge these guys and we'll have one mesh. So, uh, but you can see we're very low in the triangle count. We're 280 some odd triangles and we've started to get our blocky shape looking more uh, rounded and car like car body like if it, um, so in our next video we'll get going on uh, building out the recess of the wheels and adding some more loops to get more of this curvature, this nice curve feel. And you can see that there's some curves that we need to take care of um, on the hood and on the side here. A lot of this can be done with good texturing, um, especially in the front. If I turn on the X-ray mode, I'm pretty much thinking this is all going to be texture with 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 the exception of maybe these exhausts on the hood. So we'll we'll de delete the history on that and we will save this out. Uh we'll call this number 2 and we'll just say blocking as our 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 uh, as our model is now in the process of being blocked out, so that's it for this tutorial. Uh, we covered setting up image planes and getting your uh, first 
primitive poly box into a shape very quickly using the references as guides. So in our next video, we'll keep going with modeling out the car. So I'll see you in the next one.